Hello everyone, happy Monday and welcome into NBA Now. I'm your host, Harris Rubenstein. Gonna take you through a couple of the top NBA rumors that we got going around the association right now. We'll start with what might be the second big trade of the NBA season so far. It might be Trevor Ariza to the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, when Ariza got signed by the Suns on a one-year $15 million deal, wasn't a huge surprise that Ariza was inevitably going to get traded to another team. The fit just from the top didn't really seem to make a lot of sense, but it sounds like, according to ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski, that this could end up being a three-team trade with the Lakers, the Suns, and one other team that could involve Kentavious Caldwell-Pope being shipped out of town. Now, this would involve Kentavious Caldwell-Pope waiving his trade clause, but apparently the Suns don't want KCP, and that's where the third team comes into play. Now, the Suns want both a good uh, manageable guard with a decent long-term contract and a draft pick for a reason, whether that's a protected pick or a second round pick in a couple years that remains to be seen. But that's what they want for Ariza, and that's probably what his price tag is at this point. Now, Trevor Ariza has not been good this year. So far, his points per game, rebounds per game, and assists per game are all below his career average, as is his three-point shooting percentage coming in to their most recent game. So he has not had the season that the Suns were hoping for him to have. They were hoping for him to really be one of the better players on their team in order to boost their trade value. So this is the possible trade that I've come up with for Trevor Ariza. So it'd be the Lakers get Ariza plus a 2020 second round pick from a third team. Kentavious Caldwell Pope gets traded to that third team. And then the Suns get a protected 2020 first round pick from the Lakers and an unprotected 2020, uh, 2021 second round pick as well from the Lakers. Now that third team could be someone maybe like the Hornets who have enough cap space. Maybe the Bucks move to make another move for someone like a Catavius Caldwell Pope. They obviously just made a move recently for George Hill, so they have some cap room to work with as well. But that third team has been discussed constantly between the Lakers and the Suns. There is a rumor that the trade is going to be done by this Saturday, which is the first available deadline that you can trade a player that was signed this past offseason. So if Ariza gets moved, those rumors are really going to start heating up this Saturday and hell, he might just get dealt this weekend. So keep an eye out for Trevor Reza going back to the Lakers to be a return to Tinseltown for one Trevor Reza. Let's go to our another trade rumor. How about Anthony Davis? We've been bringing him up in trade rumors all season long, but according to multiple NBA executives, there is virtually no chance that Anthony Davis is traded until after this offseason. Why? Well, it seems that the Pelicans don't want to move Davis until they at least offer him the Supermax, which he is eligible for this coming July. Now, the players who have gotten the Supermax so far have not really seen great things happen to them. The only one that's really profited from the deal has been Steph Curry. But the other one so far, whether it's Blake Griffin, who signed the deal, then got traded four months later. John Wall has been a complete disaster with that contract, and it hasn't even kicked in yet in Washington. And Russell Westbrook, sure, you know, he signed the Supermax this past offseason, and he's obviously doing fine, but he's had multiple knee surgeries, and he's about to hit the other side of 30. So we'll see what happens with Russell Westbrook's Supermax, but... For now, with Anthony Davis and the Pelicans, seems that they are not going to move him this season and are going to wait till after the offseason. So I want to know from you guys, where will Anthony Davis play next season? Give me a P for the Pelicans or give me an E for elsewhere. Let me know in the comments section here on YouTube. I still say elsewhere, but again, I'm not Anthony Davis and I'm not about to get offered over $250 million next offseason. That's a lot of money to turn down, especially for a team that drafted you. He's been there for almost seven full seasons now. That's a long time to stay with one franchise and then just leave. Looking at you, Kevin Durant. So let me know in the comments section below where you think Anthony Davis will play next season. If you type E for elsewhere, let me know what team you think he's going to play for next season. Celtics, Lakers, whoever the hell it could be. Let's go to our next rumor. This is probably one of the best stories that we've had so far this season. The Chicago Bulls just fired their head coach, Fred Hoiberg, this couple, two weeks ago now. The new coach that just came in by the name of Jim Boylan is kind of known as a, you know, kind of a hard ass, more of a drill instructor than he is like a full NBA head coach. So he's been calling out the team of the press for being out of shape and not playing hard on defense. Well, after the Bulls got blown out by 56 points at home by the Boston Celtics, apparently the players almost didn't show up to the team facility the day later because Jim Boylan wanted to host a very intense 
120 minute practice, which for those who don't actually know how long NBA practices usually are, they're usually an hour or 90 minutes for a shoot around. He wanted to have a double practice to drill to the players that they can't lose games like that, which makes sense, right? Well, not according to almost every single other player on the Chicago Bulls. They apparently had a text message conversation between every player on the team, discussed not coming into work the next day until Laurie Markkinen and Robin Lopez saved the team chemistry by telling everyone they had to go into work today and that it would be a bad example for the younger players on the team. Apparently the players and the coaches came to a resolution. The meeting was led by Zach Levine and Justin Holiday. So good for the Bulls, narrowly avoiding a mutiny in the first week of their new head coach's tenure. Mazel tov Bulls, things are, that rebuild's really doing work for you. 56 point blot to the Celtics. What a disaster. Shout out to all the people on YouTube who thought the Bulls were gonna be the eighth seed in the Eastern Conference playoffs this year. Love you guys, you guys are absolutely nuts. What is it nuts? is using Betty aside this year to make some sweet, sweet cash, unless you're like me and put money down the Patriots to win yesterday. That was not very smart. But what is smart is going to chatsports.com slash bet, using that promo code NBA120 for a 120% deposit bonus. You can get some great, great deals to put some money down on right now, whether it's the Lakers winning the Western Conference Finals, whether it's the Warriors winning the NBA Finals, their odds have shifted a little bit back. So if you think you can take advantage of the Warriors play or title odds, excuse me, while they're a little bit behind, chatsports.com slash bet, promo code NBA120. Speaking of the Warriors, you might want to put down some money on them now because DeMarcus Cousins is about to start practicing. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, DeMarcus Cousins is expected to start practicing with the Santa Cruz Warriors, the G League team of the Golden State Warriors, today. Yeah, today, Monday, right now, Monday, December 10th, which comes almost exactly 11 months after he first blew out his Achilles on January 26th of this past year. The goal, though, is for him to be playing by Christmas, which is absolutely unfair, seeing as Steph Curry is now back, Draymond Green came back last night, the whole team chemistry seems to be back together, and here comes the best center in the NBA to smite all oncomers. If you thought that this Warriors team was just kind of slowly plotting through the first couple weeks of the season, you were right, because they were. The effort level wasn't even wasn't really there. They were fighting in the locker room. I think the lack of a true veteran presence like they've had in the past with the David West and Andre Godala and Sean Livingston dealing with injuries, they've just been kind of meandering through the first couple weeks of the season and are still the best team in the NBA. And now here comes DeMarcus Cousins, who by all accounts is set up to have an amazing season. If any of you have watched his workout tapes released by Showtime trying to chronicle his return to the court, he's looked incredible. He's stroking threes, stroking, like absolutely, I'm telling you, 30 threes in a row. They had him on a video shooting at one point, 30 in a row, which I don't know if you've watched Marcus Cousins play basketball in the past five years. That's not his game, but it's about to be. Demarcus Cousins is about to join the Warriors, and if you have any money right now in your savings, go put them on the Warriors to win the NBA Finals this year. I am so excited to see what this team is going to look like with Boogie back on the floor. Congrats to you, though, Boogie. I'm proud. He's done a very good job with his rehab and also trying to keep, you know, trying to stay a little low. I, mean, I don't think he's been all in the media trying to cause the Rockies. He's kept his head down, and he's really put a lot of effort into his rehab. So shouts to you, Boogie. Excited to see you back in the court in a couple of weeks. Speaking of coming back in a couple of weeks, how about Karis LeVert, who, after suffering what looked to be a Gordon Hayward-esque injury, is fine and is already back in the gym shooting. This is probably one of the most unlikely returns to the court I think I've ever seen. It, it looked like he snapped his entire ankle in half. Just It turned left. But all, and all it ended up being, I put in quotation marks, was a dislocated ankle. They popped it back into shape. He's been resting for the past three weeks. And it seems that he's going to be back by the new year. It's wild that he's already practicing. He's doing shoot-arounds with the team. Good for you, Karis LeVert. He's been having a fantastic season before he went down. It's going to be nice to see him back on the court, especially with the Nets team. I don't want to say stumbling because they were never supposed to be good in the first place, but they've been stumbling as of late. With Karis LeVert on the team, they're actually doing quite well to start this season. One thing you can get your friends at home, friends, parents, anyone, this holiday season is an amazing domain shirt, as you can see 
on my very chiseled chest right here. Go to www.comfortable.af to get yourself a Mizzen and Main shirt today. Great for the holiday season, and they don't only sell shirts. They sell hats, they sell t-shirts, they sell fleeces. Super comfortable. Every single thing that they make is comfortable, and they're easy to dry, they're easy to wash. They're the best piece of clothing that you will get this holiday season. Go buy one for your brother, sister, mother, father, grandfather, cousin, anyone this holiday season. They won't regret it, and neither will you. All right, let's talk a little 76ers because it seems that Joel Embiid is a little bit frustrated with his role since Jimmy Butler has joined the team. Now, this doesn't sound like something personal between Joel Embiid and Jimmy Butler, which is very good because I don't think Jimmy Butler's, I guess, persona could take another hit like this. But it sounds like Embiid is angry that he isn't the number one go-to scorer anymore. Or it's not that he isn't. It's that Jimmy Butler has taken a good amount of steam away from the Joel Embiid train. Which, mind you, like I said in our Top 10 Most Surprising Players video last week, he has been putting up Shaq-level numbers. Averaging 26 and 13 along the two blocks and some of the best defense in the NBA at the center position. Now, Jimmy Butler is a fantastic player. And the 76ers have been, I mean, nothing less than incredible since Jimmy Butler has joined the team. But you have to wonder, Jimmy Butler at this point is expected to be a long-term fit in Philadelphia with, obviously, Joel Embiid and hopefully Ben Simmons. The issue is, there's already been some thought behind, do Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons actually mesh, per, mesh excuse me, personality-wise, and how would Jimmy Butler fit into this? Now, Jimmy Butler has been saying all the right things in the media. He's been very communicative with both players and coaches. He talks up a lot of bench players. I mean, go listen to what he had to say about TJ McConnell. But at the end of the day, this is Joel Embiid's team. The team goes through the process. And if he is unhappy, there will be changes made. So let me know in the comment section below. Will Jimmy Butler be a problem in Philly? I say yes, simply because, again, this is Joel Embiid's team. Ben Simmons realized it last year, and now Jimmy Butler is going to figure it out this year. If Joel Embiid is upset, Jimmy Butler is going to hear about it, and he's not going to be happy with the results. So let me know in the comment section below if you guys think Jimmy Butler will end up being a problem in Philly. So all last year, and I guess for the past four years, we've been talking about Kyrie Irving being a flat-earth truther, which he has since recanted on and said that he was just trying to mess with people in the media and didn't realize that he was affecting people enough that science teachers were having to reteach that the earth wasn't flat. Here we go again, people, because now Steph Curry is going on podcasts and saying that he doesn't think that we landed on the moon. He didn't explain why he thinks that we didn't land on the moon, but he then doubled down again when asked and then said that, oh no, now they're going to come get us. Steph, we, we went through this whole situation before. Please, 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 can we stop having NBA players comment on conspiracies? Because these cause a huge problem. I guarantee you, go to Google Trends right now and search, did America go to the moon? Would not be surprised that there's been a spike in the past 24 hours since Steph Curry started saying this. Just like there was a spike in Kyrie Flat Earth. That's still one of the top things searched when you look at Kyrie on Google Trends. So, stop. Stop commenting on conspiracy theories. Leave them be because you're just going to cause more problems and you're causing a lot of stress to the already underpaid science teachers of the United States and America. Leave it alone, Steph. All right, let's go to our next rumor here. The Nuggets are apparently looking to not only spice up their three-point shooting, but also just spice up the media around the team because here comes Swaggy P. Yes, Nick Young is now a member of the Denver Nuggets. They signed him to a one-year deal. Not really sure why they signed him. I guess the three-point shooting numbers will be elevated a little. I mean, they are 21st in the NBA in three-point shooting percentage, but their defense has been so good this year. They're top five in, NBA, in the NBA in defensive rating, and that's been one of the reasons why they've been so good this year. So I don't understand why when they already have Isaiah Thomas, who, without a question, is the worst defender in the NBA, both in capability and effort and just overall ability. I mean, he just can't you can't defend someone who's 6'5 if you're 5'9. That's just not how math works. But Nick Young, it's an effort problem. He just doesn't try on defense. And we saw it last year when he played for the Warriors. He was a complete defensive just well, what's anomaly. When he was on the court, you couldn't play him 
in a rotation that had anything close to a bad defense. He had to be on the court almost consistently with both Draymond Green and Klay Thompson and Kevin Durant, three of the best defenders at their position in the NBA. So I guess with Nikola Jokic not being a great defender, Isaiah Thomas not being a great defender, I'm not sure how this is going to work. I'd be pretty surprised if Nick Young is still on the Nuggets by season end. But that's going to do it for me today. Remember to subscribe to us here at Chat Sports at youtube.com slash chatsportstv or just type in Chat Sports in your YouTube search bar. We'll be back with you guys later this week for some more NBA content. But for now, we'll see you.